In today's tutorial video, I wanted to cover a little bit about hashing, just from a security perspective and also a digital forensics perspective. Hashing is something that's very important. It's a, it's a mathematical algorithm or formula that will take in uh, a, any uh, a data of any size and it will return a value that, in theory, will be completely unique to that specific data set. Uh, the importance there being we can thereby prove that something is has remained completely unchanged just by checking the, the hash value. So I thought I'd give you just an example. Uh, I'm using a tool here called MD5Deep, the 64-bit uh, version. So if I just open up a command prompt here, and I'm going to go check some of the files that I have here. Just type in the command, the uh, tool itself, MD5Deep64.exe. If I just do a space, I can check any of the any file that I want. Um, I'm going to do this photo too. Uh, JPEG right here. As you can see, it's kind of telling. It's told me the directory where I can find this file right here, and it's also given kind of a string uh, of random numbers and letters. This is the hash value. And every time I run this command on this specific specific JPEG or this specific image, uh, it will return the exact same value. Doesn't matter where on my computer it's found, as long as I put in this exact photo it's going to return these these characters here and another really important thing to note is that it is impossible to go back to the data in this photo by this value that way we can kind of again we can prove that something has remained unchanged because there is no way to undo the hash that I've done just to kind of prove the fact that it is unique for every uh, for every file that we put in I'm, I'm gonna run it on the other JPEG image that I have up here so I'll just type in md5deep64.exe again I will put in my other file, which is the tallgrass.jpg. As you can see, the value it remains the exact same length as the hash value above it, but the numbers are very different. Now this will hold true for for every difference in every file. And to kind of give you an idea of a little bit more, if you make do make a change to a file, it will look completely different. There's not even going to be very very many similarities to to the, uh, the between the hashes at all. To kind of I give an example of this. I have right here just a, a text document. It's the uh, the text of the Declaration of Independence. I just kind of copied it from a website. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to hash this for us really fast. I named it doi.txt. And here's our, our hash value, this E212 number, like I said before. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit one character in this. I'm going to change the date from July 4th to July 5th. I go ahead and save that. Close that down. And this time when I run the, the the command, I get a completely new hex value. And as you can see, it looks nothing like the one right before it. So it's it would be impossible to guess that these two files are even similar in in the characters that were put in. This is important because hashing is also used in things like passwords and and other tools like that, and you don't want the hashes to seem similar between similar-looking words. So there's been a lot of complex, alg uh, a lot of complex math and uh, and algorithms that have gone into this to to make sure that they they are different. Now there does exist something in in hashing. It's called a collision, when the two hashes will overlap and will actually match each other, even though they're different sets of data. They are very rare events, but they do happen. Uh, if you are worried about this or if the, you feel that this might be a case where there could be a possible collision you can do another hash of another algorithm like I was saying right here I was doing an MD5 hash there exists other hashes such as a, a SHA-1 or a SHA-256 hash if you hash it multiple times and you can prove that they, they remain the same between the different hashing algorithms or the different mathematical formulas behind it you just have that much more evidence that what you have is completely unique and that no, it, nothing has been changed or altered. So again, hopefully this video has been informative to somebody out there and uh, they've been able to use this to their benefit. Um, we'll be going over some a little bit more complicated uh, forensics processes a little bit later. I just wanted to cover the basics. And uh, you do, as a forensics analyst, you do want to make sure that any information or any document that you pull from a, another file or another system is hashed. That way you have that proof and so somebody else can go back through the steps that you've done and prove that they get the same results. And also, if you are taking just a, an actual hard drive or some sort of data, like a CD or or a, a thumb drive or something like that, it's important to get the hash value of that to prove that you made no changes to any of the evidence on that machine. So yeah, hopefully this was informative to some of you out there, and uh, have a great day.